<laughs> hey there friends, it's Jack Taylor here and this is how I root and set up contact drums ready for mixing. So let me guess, so you made yourself a demo track, you tried to mix the drums yourself, although you gave it a rough mix, but you want to make it sound better. And I see now, you want the drums to sound very huge and fat in your face, and if you're like me and use older home drums, not sponsored by the way, toggling on the process version where you can easily get that thick and fat in your face sound that you have always been chasing for a very long time. Or you can do the unprocessed version and try and mix it yourself. But what do you do? Not root the drums at all, but mix it all in one MIDI track and it sounds like this. I really hate to say this, but guys, if you're gonna do a serious mix, do not do that. If you want to get the best metalcore drum sound, or people call it EDM drums, then you're going to have to separate every drum percussion and microphone to then put all in separate channels from the MIDI of the drums. And we can do so by using a contact plugin, whether the free version, or if you're like me, the full version, and we can use other drum software such as GDD drums, Superior Drummer, or older home drums like we're going to be using for this. If you are ready to take your production skills to a new level and hold a very good mindset, stick to the video. Hopefully this video will help you and if it did and you found this valuable then give it a thumbs up, share it to a friend, leave down a comment and subscribe to the channel especially if you love modern metalcore or fall music. And now with all that said, let's get started. For this tutorial we're going to use Reaper. I apologize to those who use Pro Tools, Cubase, FL Studio etc. If you guys like me to do a video on any of those of rooting drums let me know down in the comments below. First of all you want to get a track and we'll name it MIDI Drums. And then the next we're going to click the FX button here. Now I got quite a lot of plugins so we're going to need to find the, the plugin that we want, which is the contact software. So we type in contact and you're left with three options, which is contact, contact seven and contact eight. I just go with contact eight just because I like the layout of it, that's all. You can get instruments recommended to you, saying new instruments for you, other things that you can have, which is pretty nice. Now, I personally like to go for invasion drums, but for this video, I like to use older home drums and we'll just bounce them in just like that and there we have it we're on the classic view right now you just go up to view uh, you can toggle back to default view if you wanted but for now we're just going to stay on the classic view right now just so that we can get access to the output which you can also find in view and that's what we're looking for we're going to bring up outputs we need outputs to try and separate each percussion from the drums per se we need to go into the shells and the cymbals the reason we bring these up is so we could get access to the mixer and this will basically give you a few options what you actually want to do you can solo them mute them phase flip them gain stage them, tune them and increase the sustain or decrease the sustain. And down here gives you the option to route the drums into the contact software, which can eventually route it into the DAW software. Now at the moment we're using the process version of all the home drums, but we want to go to the unprocessed version. And why is this? Because with the process version, you're limited to what you can do with this and you cannot separate the kicks, the snares, everything else. So, if we go to, if we toggle that to processed, like you just saw me do, you have an abundance of options that you can do with this kick, the kick in and out, the room mics, and the one shots, everything that you can deal with right there, and that you can just gain stage if you want to. So now that we've done that, we can name our track, so we're just gonna name output one, uh, kick in. What I'm doing is I'm mimicking these names of these channels within the contact plugin. Just makes it easier that way. So you just do kick in and kick out and uh, we could do the rest of the mics in a bit. Um, that's the way I do it in order. So normally just when you're doing or rooting drums, just do this in order like the rest of the mix engineers do this. So we got, so kick in, kick out, we got snare top, snare top A, snare top B, and then you got snare bottom. So do that and so on. Have it all in order like that, just cause it's easier for the mix engineer to understand this organization like that. Now, going back onto the room mic. So normally you would have one mic, which is the rest of the room noise of the drums. But the way I like to do it to kind of allow myself an abundance of options when it comes to mixing drums or even gain staging, I'm going to separate the kick, snare, toms and cymbals, all separate room mics. So we're going to name four more outputs. K, 
kit, a room, snare room, tom room, and this is obviously the cymbal room. Now as you can see here, uh, as we named our tracks, they're not really named on here as well. So this is a bit buggy like that. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to go up to this exclamation mark up here. Now what this is going to do is it's going to recalibrate the whole software and get everything correct. But normally this is to fix bugs, glitches and issues and anything like that. Click that. And as you can see, it's recalibrated. Now we should see a difference in these uh, these buses right here when we go down. And there we have it. So this will sort it out for you. So we go on here where it says defaults. Now if this says kick in, just click kick in. And if that's kick out, then press kick out. The next one you got snare top A. Now don't put in this channel here because that's overhead close mics. That is not a snare channel. We want to be on the snare tab and then we can then continue on from there. So just like that, guys, um, I'll leave you guys to do the rest. Now I've done all that. Now in the kick tab, um, where it has the room kick, so so this is basically what I did, like the, the room on the kick tab, like I just basically just put kick room on it, uh, same with snare room, then there's tom room right there, and the symbols, that just symbol room like that. Again, there is one shots that this offers. Um, this is completely optional for you guys. If you want to use the one shots in this plugin, by all means go for it, but I'm going to use other one shots for this fall mix that I'm going to do in the future. Now it's time to route the contact drums into the DOS software. Now there's an easier way of routing the drums as you make the tracks. Um, so normally you would manually create tracks and then try throughout the routing, which can be a bit more overwhelming and stressful to do. But the way I like to do it personally from me, and it's easier that way that I like to share with you guys. You highlight this uh, contact a uh, text up there because if you don't highlight that, then you're limited of a few options over here on the edit tab. Now, we want to build multi channel routing for output of selective FX, but we can't do that. And why is that? Because we haven't highlighted the text. So, highlight that text, go to edit again, and there you have it. Build multi-channel routing for output of selective FX. This gives you a list of uh, tracks that are going to be made along with the names that it's going to make for you. It's asking you, do you want to add the following tracks for this effect? Just click yes. We're going to be checking the routing just in case uh, it does something wrong. Even though it's meant to route the drums for you, but it's not 100% accurate, so we're gonna have to check this ourselves. I'm going to insert another track and just uh, make it a drum bus. So, make it a drum bus. So just quickly, I'm going to insert a new track. You could do the same as well, but this is going to be our drum bus. So name this drum bus. I'm going to put the MIDI drums in here and I'll put the rest of the uh, uh, tracks that we just made for ourselves into here. Now don't put the tracks in this track because it's not going to work. Like you're not going to hear anything if you put the tracks in there. So just leave it outside of the MIDI, just like that. And of course, I'll bring this up to the top too. Oh, don't forget to delete the rest of the outputs and the aux outputs because we just don't really need them. Now let's see the routing. So check for the routings. Now we want to be looking at the input uh, routings, not the output, because we're going to be hearing that out the speakers anyway. So kind of like see these numbers in order as you go down the list of it. To me, this looks fine. Everything looks fine. So we can uh, test to see if um, the drums really work and we can hear something. Uh, yeah, yep, this seems to be rooted well, so we can hear the drums, uh, especially the snare, uh, feeding through. Now, what if we hear the snare in solo, just to be clear? Yeah, we can hear that in solo, uh, the snare bottom. Yeah, everything seems fine, so you just gotta not only check the whole drum set if they're all rooted, but just check every single one of them in solo just to make sure that the routing is right. The way I like to organize my drums is not only having everything in the drum bus, but there's also a few buses that I would make is the kick, snare, toms, uh, cymbals, and room mics that we're, we're gonna have to put in. If you're blending like five kick samples, like you, you want all these five samples into a kick bus that way. I'm going to make five tracks because that's all we need. And we're going to name it the kick bus, snare bus, tom bus, cymbal bus, and room bus. If you have two or more tracks, such as the kick, like we say, we're going to drag them all into the kick bus. The snares, so we've got three snare tracks, 
we put them in the snare bus. We got four tom tracks, they live in the tom bus. Five cymbal mics, they all belong to the cymbal bus. Four room mics, they belong in the room bus. That's exactly how I like to organize my drums like that. If you just excuse me guys, I'm going to grab a drum beat from one of my projects. All right, we got the drums now, let's give it a listen. Now, I need to point out the clipping in the kick bus and snare bus. I know this isn't some like gain stage in video as it's meant to be a, a routing setup video, but there is one problem about this is that I think the kick trigger, the snare trigger is still on there for some odd reason. So let's give them a listen. And I can hear some, what's that snare bleed? That's a snare sample actually. So we need to sort that. So if you guys, uh, get this problem, what you need to do is just um, switch from default just to output 19, which we don't have outputted. So on the one shot, the one shot snare and same for the one shot kick. So just put them all on output 19 and you shouldn't hear any of the sounds in the kick. Now, of course, it takes away some of the slap and the punch, everything like that, because it's just it's just raw and we love punchy drums. No wonder we use drum samples. Now, in that case, if you just don't want to use the drum samples from the older home drums, so what you can do is that if you want to add in like a kick sample that we can use as an example, we can insert a new track, uh, make sure that's in the kick bus and we need to sort out the routing ourselves. So if we go into the MIDI drums routing right here, and we find, uh, well actually, let's name our track first. I just call it Kick Trigger. We need to send the MIDI drums into the new track. So what we need to do is we add a new send and then we find the word Kick Trigger that you must see around here. It's up here, so click that. And then we got a new send. So you can either choose one and two or three and four, like whichever. Let's just take one and two. And then what we can do next is we open up the effects panel for this track and we'll type in Trigger 2, which is the plugin that I love to use. And from there, you can just add in your own samples. You can browse for samples that you have. So these are the samples I normally use, such as the George Lever. I'll just go for a random one, like Slam a Ding Dong. Drag this in, and this is what it sounds like. So once you slap that in, you should be able to hear that in the kick bus. And this is without Trigger. and with Trigger on. For the OG metalheads that are watching this video, I know this isn't going to be like very appealing to you considering that the drum samples would be used on drums like this. However, like if you make your own stuff and you don't like using drum samples, like if you're one of those people, that's completely fine, that's fair enough. You do what you want to do with drums like this. Um, because, well, nowadays, there's going to be a few drum VSTs that we use. Trying to record drums in a recording studio is expensive as frick. And that is just how it is in the digital era of production because it's made to be more easier, accessible and cheaper for us producers to be doing stuff like this. On the plus side, you now know how to root and set up drums. And if you have enjoyed this video, give a thumbs up, share it to a friend and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos in the future. And don't forget to leave a comment down below about your thoughts or anything. And if I missed out anything, put it down in the comments below and I'll pin it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.